Davin now writes full-time and generously took time out for this interview from an impending deadline. She says there are many struggles involved in working out of the home, like family feeling free to call at any time and the difficulty of staying disciplined and focused on the work, but that's nothing compared to the challenge of making a living from the fruit of one's imagination. Even despite the success of Months and Wedding and that I'm working as a screenwriter now, which, you know, which is also a very, very lucky thing, uh, there are mornings I just get up and I... I'm seized with panic. It's like, how am I going to pay rent for the rest of the year? You know, what if I don't get another job after this? And what if I can't write? Because you know, writing is so is also such a difficult, you know, elusive thing. You know, there are days you just can't write at all. And then you, you know, and then those moments you just suddenly think that, God, maybe maybe I can never write again. And every time I finish a script, I have the same feeling. I feel that I've said like all the stories I've had and all the things that I could think of, I've given to the script. And now I'm spent. I have nothing else to say. And I'll never be able to write again. Still, Davin says, working for yourself means a lot of flexibility and freedom, taking two weeks off whenever you wish and can afford it. But when your work is storytelling, recreating the drama of human interaction and life as lived authentically, that all takes place in your mind. And there is no clock your mind can punch at the end of the day. Especially when you're a writer. It's like, in a way, you don't you don't really have downtime because even when it, this is becomes like second nature. Maybe it's a bit like journalism as well in that. Um, you know, because every time you're out and you're with people, your ear is so attuned to picking up, you know, little pieces of dialogue or gestures or subtext and what people say. All of that feeds into your work. So, you know, it's like you feel like taking notes every time you're with people, which is also a bit sad because, you know, you never really off work then. Davin was recently back in India, and she says she was surprised when she attended a wedding to hear music from the score to Monsoon Wedding being played. She said it showed that her film has entered wedding culture in her homeland. Monsoon Wedding, Davin says, while it deals with a few difficult issues like a family's history of sexual abuse, is primarily an affectionate look at India, at her character and her changing cultural landscape and people. A script with that as its focus, Dalvin notes, wouldn't seem likely to even be sold, let alone made, let alone win awards. It was so culturally specific, and to have a movie that was that had absolutely no what they call in Hollywood commercial viability. It had no, there were no American characters, there were no American settings. I really didn't think the movie would get made because it was so extremely specific to this culture and to this particular community in this particular city. And then the movie gets made. And suddenly it manages to transcend, you know, the globe and becomes a success all over the world from countries like, you know, from not just, you know, America and England and, all, and Western Europe, but also Eastern Europe and Iceland. And I realized at the end of that is that, you know, people are just people. And we're, we all have the same, you know, desire for love, for happiness, um, for companionship. And Monson Wedding, despite how culturally specific it was, managed to become universal. And I guess that could be the only reason why people went to see the movie. Sabrina Davin's Monsoon Wedding plays Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m. at Northwest Plaza Cinema in Muncie. Davin will present a program following the film. For more information, call 741-7336.